let me stress that the Turkish people firmly believe that what happened to the Armenians was not genocide. For nine decades, they've denied this ever happened. It's such an anachronism, it's shocking. We have no reluctance to recognize genocide in Darfur. We have no reluctance to talk about the Cambodian genocide or the Rwandan genocide or the Holocaust. Why is it only this genocide? It is incredible that Orphan Pamuk now faces three years in prison for what? For daring to even say that this should be discussed in Turkey today. They are in denial. They covering their tracks. They marked the dead. It's the last major taboo in Turkish politics. The authorities are afraid their own people will find out what happened. Our society, our culture, we do not commit genocide. We will never accept an accusation like that. But for those of you who aren't aware, there was a, uh, a genocide that did take place uh, uh, against the Armenian people. Overseas tonight, a critical American ally is up in arms, quite literally, about something that happened yesterday on Capitol Hill. I see a hypocrisy in not recognizing the, the Armenian genocide simply because there is quote unquote an ally who doesn't want us to do so. Now the White House is warning the Turkey's reaction to what happened in Congress could further destabilize Iraq. Journalist Harand Dink one of the most prominent voices of Turkey's Armenian community was killed by a gunman at the entrance to his newspaper's offices. On January the 19th, 2007, Hrant Dink, a Turkish Armenian journalist, was gunned down in broad daylight on the streets of Istanbul. His killer, a 17-year-old Turk. The reason? According to the gunman, Hrant Dink had insulted the honor of the Turkish people. To this day, no sentence has ever been passed. In the past few years, cracks have begun to appear in the wall of silence. Pandora's box had been opened in Turkey. Hrant Dink stood up and said, yes, this was genocide. For over 95 years, Turkey has denied that any genocide ever took place. Even today, just to mention it is an offense for which Dink and many others had been prosecuted many times. But all he wanted was for the Turkish people to face up to their past, to the genocide of over one million Armenians, yet a crime which most ordinary Turks know little about. He would say, don't think that they know and they're denying the facts, they're denying something they, they don't know. So it was about telling what happened. He would say, I don't just want those responsible to say that they admit it, but I want the entire population to know that who did it. And I want to know that it will not happen again. Although since Dink's murder, more and more people are starting to question it, the official version of Turkish history is simple there was no genocide. Even today, it is widely accepted as the truth. Hrant Dink had been fighting a century of official denial. When you say genocide, that's the greatest accusation you could make against a nation. We, the Turkish people, will never accept this. From our point of view, our past is as clean as can be. No one should think we are capable of something like that. An opinion shared by many Turks throughout Europe. Although in recent years, many European parliaments, such as France, Switzerland and Sweden, have acknowledged the genocide against Armenians, many Turks feel personally insulted by this. As in Germany, they demonstrate against any attempt to recognize the atrocities for what they were 
declaring the subject taboo. But the voices of those who demand Turkey face up to its past can no longer be ignored. This process is certainly going to affect Turkey. Turkey will have to radically change its version of history. I want them to know. I want this to be discussed on every Turkish TV channel, in every newspaper, everywhere. Then Turkey will eventually have to admit, yes, it was genocide after all. We acknowledge that fact. But for now, the Turkish government is unyielding. A key trading partner and the country that provides a bridge to the Middle East, it is too strategically important to risk upsetting. And forcing them to acknowledge an event that happened a century ago is not a priority for the leaders of Western nations. Turkey is a key NATO ally. Although when the situation is about an alliance as important as NATO, which we claim is an alliance based on shared values, then we cannot keep silent about the truth. Too little is being done. Too little is being said plainly. People keep quiet about what they know to be true. Because basically, there is no one in Western Europe who doesn't know that it was a genocide. As Turkey has come under pressure to recognize the genocide, its leaders have used their country's strategic importance to deflect all discussions, threatening to break off diplomatic relations and to cancel arms contracts. Each time the West caves in, and meantime all the Armenian victims and their descendants can do, is wait in vain for official acknowledgement of the truth. You tell your story and you're told, not only by the Turkish government or by Turkish uh, citizens, but also by the American government and other Western governments, that what you live through didn't really happen quite that way. Imagine what that would feel like. You, you, you survive and you live with those memories. You tell your truth, a truth you were told you would never get to tell. And then you are told that your truth is, uh, is inadequate or is subjective or is, you know, uh, overly emotional and is inaccurate. Uh, I think it's devastating. Each year, on the 24th of April, hundreds of thousands of Armenians from all over the world make a pilgrimage to Yerevan, the capital of Armenia. Here, they mourn the victims at a monument standing not far from the country where their ancestors were citizens and the mass murder took place, Turkey. For it was there on the 24th of April, 1915, that the annihilation of their people began. Armenians, the world's oldest Christians, call this genocide Aret, literally the catastrophe. <laughs> It is time for people to finally accept the truth. And they have to stand up and do something about it to make sure that Turkey accepts it too. It's a sad feeling. It feels as if someone in your own family died. All those memories, the photos you see of people hung, the women, the children. The genocide must finally be acknowledged. After the fight, I said, I dedicate this fight to those who died that day. That day was the 24th of April and I dedicated my fight to them. For the three million Armenians in the tiny Republic of Armenia, along with the five million scattered all over the world, the grief on this day is mixed with pain and anger. They cannot understand why even today Turkey will not acknowledge what happened back then. They feel betrayed and abandoned by a world that still accepts the Turkish version of history. People talk about slaughtered Christians, slaughtered Armenians. On what basis are they making these ugly claims? To accuse Turkey without proof that such a massacre took place in 1915, 
To make such ugly claims against Turkey is absolutely unacceptable. No matter how often it is claimed, we will never accept it, because it never happened. But let them come and present their evidence. Then we will deal with our history if necessary. Deep within the archives of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs in Berlin lie stored thousands of reports, letters and notes. Once classified papers written and compiled by Turkey's ally during the First World War.